He likes fast cars, helicopters and, best of all, buying houses. Lots of houses. You're about to meet 32-year-old Nathan Birch, perhaps Australia's most surprising real estate mogul. He grew up in a blue-collar suburb and quit school in year 12. With nothing more than a burning desire to retire young, he's amassed a portfolio of hundreds of properties. Nathan believes the great Australian dream of home ownership is still alive and well. And now he shares his secrets with Denham Hitchcock. So as of today, how many properties do you own? I'd have over 200. It's quite a number. It is. It's not enough. It's not enough. Southwood traffic, flick off that X-ray a little bit. It's about to come airborne. So what is your net worth? My net worth uh, in property itself, I've got over $50 million, probably about 55 mil worth of property. That's not bad at the uh, grand old age of 32. Nathan Birch owns so many properties. This is the only way to see them. I can see why you want to buy properties up here. So the market here, you know, I think it's only just scratching the surface. It's like Australia's Miami. He's Australia's newest, most unlikely property baron and he's breaking the rules of the Millionaire's Club by revealing the secrets of how to get there. Today, I'm here to help you tell your boss where to go. Using YouTube, and, Nathan uh, has built a legion of followers desperate to make their fortune. Tonight, we follow two of them to see if it can be done. There's people out there with, you know, hundreds of properties and they're living their dream. Rather than me working for my money, my money will be working for me. Young hopefuls on modest salaries, who until now thought they'd be renting forever. I think that most people plan more for what they're going to do on the weekend or the next holiday, or whether they're going to spend their money on, you know, Thursday on a payday or whatever, than what they do actually planning for their own financial future. Nathan Birch is not your typical property investor. Morning, everybody. Morning. He holds no formal degrees, wears a white T-shirt and thongs every day. But Nathan has one of the most enviable portfolios in the country. He made his millions, then started a property investment company. I saw my father die at a young age of 62. I was 16, and I realised that I didn't want to have to go and work for my whole life not to be able to enjoy it. I wanted to have, you know, choices to do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do them. And, uh, you know, I devised a plan and property was the vehicle to get me there. Nathan now owns more than 200 investment properties. All are positively geared, which means the rents cover the mortgages. Phenomenal success from humble beginnings. Mum's expecting us. She is. She's uh, cooked us some nice lunch. No matter how much money you have, everyone needs their mum. Hi, love. Hi, Mum. How are you? Hi. Junette raised four boys in Western Sydney. Oh, ho, ho. roast lamb. Oh, this oh. get a monster. Hope it's all right. So this is Nathan's favourite, I hear. This is his fave. The family dollar had to go a long way. Did you see something in him when he started to get a little bit older that was heading this way? Oh, yes, because he used to save every cent he had. If you gave him, when he was at school, if you gave him any money, he'd keep it. He wouldn't spend it. So Nathan's got $50 million odd of property. Mm -hmm. Why hasn't he bought Mum a nice big mansion somewhere? Because Mum doesn't want one. Truly. My little house is fine. That's what I always do. As she gets older and I build my dream home, I plan on putting her in, the, in my house, mm. in my large house. So, yeah. no, he just... He's got his dream home plan. Yeah, you know, I can get food like this cooked every day. <laughs> so this is where it all began, the start of the empire. This was the start of it. Nathan began building his portfolio around the corner from Mum's house, here in Sydney's blue-collar suburb of Mount Druid. How old were you when you bought this place? I was 18 when I bought this one. 18? Yeah, yeah. This home wasn't my ideal home, but it was a starting point, and that's what, you know, 
what laid the foundations for what I've got today. So if anyone can do it, what are the secrets? What are the steps? Yeah. My three golden rules are buying below market value, having upside for growth, and having a strong cash flow. The below market value will give you a buffer uh, to ensure that you're protecting yourself and purchasing the property. Having upside for growth is, you know, you make money when you, you know, sell a property off or whatever the case may be. And finally, you want to be buying a property that is neutral to positive cash flow. And what that is, uh, is to do is to be able to look after itself and to be putting money in your pocket each week. So. Buying a property for below market value, I mean, that's, yeah. that's simple economics. Exactly. But how is that actually done? Because there are hundreds of thousands of people out there looking to do that yeah. every weekend. Yeah. Look, that is the key. Uh, you know, I used to spend eight hours to 10 hours a day trawling the internet, um, trawling real estate agents' offices. That is where you do your research to actually understand what is good value and what is not. What a real estate agent puts as a price on the property has no relevance to me. What has relevance is, based on recent sales and other properties currently on the market that are selling, how does the property that I'm looking at compare to them and where does the value lay? If I had to sell that property, what would I get for it? It's my pleasure to welcome Nathan Birch and Daniel Young. Nathan's rules are simple, but so is the dream he's selling, financial freedom. I didn't want to have to go and work 40 years doing something for someone I hated and in a job that I didn't like. Well, who wouldn't agree with that? It's a powerful pitch to a room full of clients, potential investors, and a generation of first home buyers struggling to get into the market. What was the strategy? I was happy to sacrifice my youth. 26-year-old Rochelle knows all about sacrifice. Let's watch James Bond. No, no, no. Watch a James Bond movie. I'll sit here. If you, otherwise, I'll leave and go. She signed up to Nathan's investment company and to save money for a house She's living with her parents. Mum cooks dinner, so I can't complain. It's saving me money. <laughs> the situation isn't as strange as it once was. More than one in four young adults are now living at home to cut costs. We're kippers, aren't we? What's this? Kids in parents' pockets eroding retirement savings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very much a... Um, what would you call it? Tight ass? <laughs> or, um, yeah. You're careful with very, your money. I'm very frugal. Is that the word? Frugal's a good word. Yes. She's bought a knockdown two better on the New South Wales central coast. The plan is to replace it with a duplex, live in one half and rent out the other to help pay the mortgage. So this house, it's got character. <laughs> yes, it's retro, <laughs> 1950s or something, I think. What sort of achievement is it to slide the key into the front lock of this place? It's like my hard work's paid off. Mm. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a reward. I feel rewarded for all my sacrifices. And there's been a lot of those. Rochelle earns just $63,000 a year as a receptionist. Like everyone else, her wage isn't increasing, but house prices certainly are. My weekly budget for my groceries, all my food, everything, is $30. $30 for the whole week? For the whole week. For food? Yes, that's correct. How is that possible? And coffee. <laughs> How it's, is that possible? It's possible. Yes, so um, I usually buy everything when it's on special. Things like cans of tuna, mm. 80 cents a dollar. What about clothes shopping? So my last shop was maybe a month ago and I bought eight to ten items of clothing and I spent under $200. So what is your weekly budget total? If I spent over $150 in one week, I'd be feeling pretty sick. Right now, yeah, I like to spend low. <laughs> Counting dollars is also how Nathan started. Now he's counting cars. This is his collection. Some a reminder of where he's come from. You know, as a kid, being a blue collar family worker, um, you know, we had like these type, these type of cars. So, you know, I just bought them for memento sake. And here I see we're moving up into the next realm. 
Yeah, yeah. Cash this flow. Is, this is Mr. Cash Flow. This is uh, my uh, Bentley GT Continental. After this, uh, I plan on getting a Rolls Wraith and a Lamborghini Aventador. It's no Lamborghini, but to Ozcan, his 99 Nissan Skyline is better. Right on ass, 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 ass. Yes, yeah, I still remember the day I bought it, to be honest. I drove 15 hours straight, um, went for three tanks of fuel. That excitement, it's always been a dream, so two and a half years it's been now, almost coming on to our third anniversary. But, um, you yeah. You talk about it like she's a girlfriend. Oh, it's more than a girlfriend. I'd say it's more a wife. Keep her happy and she'll keep you happy. Oz is another one of Nathan's disciples, but he's 23 years old and on $50,000 a year. The only way to get a deposit for a house is to sell the car and catch the bus. Oz can. Yep. You convinced him to sell the Skyline. <laughs> Look. You're a terrible man. Oz has uh, decided to sell his car, and uh, that's his decision. And there's more bad news for Oz. Oh, my God, are you serious? The car is just the beginning. <clears throat> PlayStation, hoverboard, laptops, the lot. Oz is selling everything he has to get into the market. Done. Happen all the boys' toys, though, isn't it? He who dies oh. with the most toys wins. They say, basically, in simple forms, this is basically my deposit for my next house. Like Rochelle, Oz is moving from expensive Sydney to a more affordable area a block of land on the outskirts of Newcastle, New South Wales. So this is it. This is your life savings being replaced by 502 square metres of earth. On pictures, it's just a photo, but when you come to reality, you get these different emotions. It's a good feeling. He bought it for $250,000. Next, he needs to build a house, but in the meantime, there's a mortgage to pay. Shouldn't a 23-year-old be out travelling, spending, enjoying all that life has to offer? Yeah, they should. They should until a certain point where you can realise that you're doing that and time flies by. And then what, you're 25, 27, 30, no family, no kids, no lifestyle. There's no foundation to say, you know, this is who you are. But like everyone else, Oz is taking a gamble. The main concern? Interest rates. Currently, they're at an all-time low. But are they about to rise? I don't believe so. I believe the interest rates are to stay. What happens if the market crashes? Look, I've, I've heard lots of these scenarios going back in 2003 when I signed my first contract or shaking as I signed it, and I thought the same things myself. We're not a Detroit, we're not America, and our systems are heavily regulated to protect ourselves from that. 